This video, this video right here is gonna mark the very beginning of the rest of our lives with my dogs Finnegan and Bentley. Today, I am going to start my raw journey with you guys. My heart beats dog and I want to do whatever I can to help them live as long as possible. All that to say, I am going to document my entire journey of taking my dogs to eating raw food. And I'm gonna show you guys the good, the bad. I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be transparent, raw, and authentic. No pun intended, but kind of. Before we start going all in raw, I want to measure and track if indeed feeding them raw helps their health in ways that I can measure. So I have a handful of baseline metrics. I'm gonna show you what those metrics are now by measuring them and weighing them, etc. And then after I fed them raw for probably after the first like four weeks and then maybe every few months after that, I'll show you the update so we can see are they doing better or are they doing worse or maintaining the same. Let's jump in to this journey into raw right me oh oh guys hey sorry um before we actually get started uh if you are new here i just wanted to thank you for for being here with our pack if you want to be part of our mission to save all the damn dogs click that subscribe button down below okay let's let's get into it right right meow all right so finnegan is our newer dog he's our second dog uh, if you want more information on him and where he came from how we adopted him what rescue we went through watch the video linked up here uh after you you finish this. So let's do Finnegan's baseline metrics. Uh, so he is about 20 and a half, almost 21 weeks old estimated. Let's go ahead and get his weight. Okay, 34.8 pounds. And it's hard to see, but he's he's pretty skinny. Let me see if I can say, excuse my, excuse my private parts, but you can kind of see I don't know, I guess it's hard to see, but I can feel it. I can really feel his ribs. Let's just kind of give a once over. Oh, look how handsome. So first I want to do is kind of take note of his coat. It is, it is kind of stringy, a little oily, and I know, I know, grungy, if you will. You can kind of see, oh yeah. See, look at my face, look at my face. I'm just a little scringy. He also gets those eye goobies. Let's see if we can get it on camera. Um, come here, can you see that? Oh, good job, baby. I don't know if you guys can see that, but let me see which eye has it worse. Definitely that one. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see that very well, but I'm constantly picking off those eye boogers and dealing with his weeping eyes. Let me fix the camera. He is very itchy, particularly by his neck, his ears, and kind of his back bum area. So he's constantly itching. But here you can get a better look at his eye, <laughs> at his eye booger. Can I see his little eye boogers? It's a little hard, because there you go. You can see his eye boogers. He gets those all the time to where they'll just be oozing out. Um, let's get a look at your teeth. Oh, look at that. You lost a tooth, sweet monkey. That must be painful, baby. Okay, my poor guy. Um, but then you can kind of see his fur composition. That's the one thing that's kind of noted. It's kind of just blah. All right, so we talked earlier about his discoloration. So you can see some of the irritation there. Uh, the vet said, again, she's not super concerned about that. This is his groin area. Okay, we'll close you up. That's, I know, that's vulnerable. But, the, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so, <laughs> I'm sorry, I did not mean to bite or bite you, to hit you with my foot, stinky. Hi, hi, such a good kid. Uh, the vet's not super concerned with it, but it is just something to note that he has the skin discoloration. And see, so you can see here his itching. This is what he does frequently. He'll itch it himself, bite it himself, scratch. I know, itchy man. One thing I noticed with him is he is um, uh, uh, urgently thirsty, meaning like he needs water or he's gonna scream and cry after he eats kibble and a lot of it. Like he'll drink an entire bowl. <laughs> All right, so on to, 
Yeah, his stool. So I know that's such a fun topic. Um, again, you know when you're a dog mom, AF, when uh, you know more about their stool than other things. Um, Finnegan's stool, so I do have a picture of it. Uh, so I will be able to use that to quantitate, quantitatively compare his, his, his uh, stool on kibble, which is what he's eating right now, versus raw, uh, when he starts raw full time. Um, to describe his stool, it is light in color. Um, it is frequent, um, probably three, four times a day. And he, it's on the softer side. For the entire day yesterday, I was able to keep track of like when Ben was drinking and I know how much water is in his bowl. He is drinking an absurd amount of water. And guys, here's something that has always been super eye-opening or I don't know, concerning for me is how thirsty he is all the time. He's always thirsty, especially after he eats his kibble. And my suspicion and my assumption is that because kibble, it, because kibble's dry, it's not hydrated, it's, it's, it's processed, full of glucose, sugar, um, and carbs, that it, it dehydrates him. Now, I'm not gonna make any assumptions, uh, strong assumptions, but that is my inkling, we'll call it. Yesterday, he drank over probably 70 ounces of water. If you're really squirmy, uh, you don't like gross things, you might wanna skip uh, a few seconds ahead for this next one, but um, I actually, I took picture, I know, I, I told you guys I'm a dog mom AF, but I took pictures of the stools of both Finnegan and Bentley. I, I'm not gonna show that right here. If, if you want to see that, like a before and after stool, uh, I could probably send that. I mean, some of you guys are, are geeking out on this as well. Um, but I know now I have like a physical picture of what his stool looks like. This is so weird, but hey guys, I mean, bowel health for humans and dogs, I mean, that's really important. So um, we're gonna say hard to soft is the uh, texture typically. And this is all, again, all these metrics are as he's been on kibble. Let's go ahead and take a look at his um, body composition. Now, I, come here, it's okay. So I have this Whistle uh, GPS tracking unit on him. So it's kind of like a Fitbit. And I use that to help make sure, come here, it's okay. I use that to make sure that he is active. So I do keep my dogs active. Um, and I would say that just, I'll let you guys make your own, you know, judgment for his, um, his composition. But, you know, he's, he's got a little bit of the taper. Um, there are like dog body composition guides online. But for him, he's decently muscular. Um, you know, it, it tapers in it, his, his waist, which you kind of want to see. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right, so the, all right, so the next thing we want to look at are his eyes. Um, and the reason is that has been a pain in my arse for a long time because Bentley has these whooping um, and, and what we call booger eyes. I no, God, this this video is so super gross. I don't, I'm sorry about that, but this is, I mean, you know, if you're gonna be a dog mom, this is like serious business. So let's look at his eyes. So these are the kind of eye boogers um, that he frequently gets. It's so gross, it's so annoying. Um, this eye uh, mark is something the vet is aware of too, by the way, and they're monitoring. Anyways, so let's look at his skin. Um, one thing with his skin, we want to look at the health of it. So I know from the camera angle, his coat looks shiny. And honestly, I would say it looks, you know, shiny-ish. I think we do a decent, a decent job, right? But what it's harder to see on the camera and the more, the bigger issue is that Bentley always itches. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but he's just riddled with flakes. Um, it's really hard to get on camera but let me see if I can, good job, Ben. You guys can see just, oh, there we go. Here we go, look at those flakes. This is, so here's a good example. He's always very itchy. Um, can you leave it? He has kind of some, um, sorry, I'm trying to <laughs> cover him. Um, skin irritations here. Again, this is stuff that I have shown the veterinarian and you know, she is monitoring. It's nothing like super severe. It's more just a skin irritant, likely, um, diet driven so that's one thing we're going to kind of keep a look at uh, he constantly licks you guys can see he's always itchy are you an itchy boy you guys can see all those flakes my poor boy so this is why he itches and scratches all the time because he's just riddled with 
dead. <laughs> hi, hi, handsome. You are the prettiest though. Let's look at your teeth. I know. Okay, wait, 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 Ben, wait. Can I see? So his teeth look pretty decent. Now that is something I do. Um, I make sure that we brush his teeth most nights. So his teeth look sh should look decent. Biggest thing for Ben is that he's super itchy. Yeah, you're so handsome. Um, he's beautiful and he has these goopy eyes, huh? And your eyes are so pretty, they shouldn't be so goopy, huh? Oh, and before I forget, um, the one thing about Ben and his breath is, whoa, he has some stinky breath. Even the vet said, you know, she's looking at his teeth and his teeth don't look horrible, especially for being this old. But she said, that is pretty bad breath and that there doesn't seem to be anything super medical. Like it's not like a crazy infection or anything like that. It's just maybe diet, diet driven. That's so be interested to see if his breath is also smelly on raw. Right, Bentley's weight is 62.6 pounds. Bentley, for his entire life, has been on the more anxious side of the spectrum. Um, he suffers and has suffered from separation anxiety. He's kind of always on edge and kind of like t um, high, not, not high energy, but just high anxiety. So I will be curious to see if raw food has any change to that. And now for the not so fun measurement, but I do think it's important is um, testing his blood glucose and this is important because I want to see how his blood sugar spikes or, or doesn't spike or decreases etc after he eats kibble versus raw so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick I'll be sure not to show the needle but I will show you the results of his blood glucose my mission here my mission is to dispel all of this fake news and nonsense that kibble is a superior form of food. No, 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 I know, I know. There's some sensitivities. I may have just smacked you in the face with, with my words. Don't take offense. I'm learning about the kibble and pet food industry right there with you. So I am placing no judgment, zero judgment, but the more research I have done, and I've done a lot of it, you guys have seen my Rodney Habib interviews. If not, I'll link them up here. He is the dog dad AF who has traveled around the world working with scientists and veterinarians to prove the significance and the power of raw and fresh feeding your dogs and helping them to live as long as possible. In fact, this is his shirt, um, which uh, I'll link it down below if you guys wanna get one, cause it's, it's, it's pretty damn cool. But anyways, I digress. Now that we have all of our baseline metrics, we are ready to start feeding raw. I think it is very important to do something like this when you're gonna make a pretty big change, especially with their diet, because you wanna be able to make sure that they're going and, and progressing upwards, not, not downwards. So this way I'm good to go. I'm confident that they are going to thrive, but I wanna stay unbiased, I wanna stay factual, take all the emotions out of it, because at the end of the day, I care mostly about how well my dog is doing mentally, physically, health-wise, etc. Um, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video, again, a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button because you don't want to miss my next video, which will be their first time trying raw food. And if you have more questions about raw, um, again, here's my Rodney Habib interviews. You can watch linked right here. That's gonna give you a good foundation to answer pretty much all of your questions. Um, I'll have resources linked below, but as always, you can comment on the video below and let's get some dialogue started. Let's get engaged. Let's talk together. Let's network. You can also hit me on Instagram. So don't forget to turn your notification bell on so you don't miss the next video where I show you uh, what kind of raw food I'm going to feed, why I chose what raw food I'm going to feed, Feed and to see if they like it because who knows maybe they won't so stay tuned thank you so much and I hope that you have a beautiful